A couple of years prior to the beginning of World War II, U.S. intelligence managed to acquire information that their most probable future enemy, Japan, had been designing a supercruiser. Armed with three 10mm main battery guns and coated in strong armor, she would have surpassed all of her counterparts in the world at that time. The USA weren't going to surrender the initiative and started preparing a symmetrical response. That task could have been accomplished by following the German way. The Germans designed their Scharnhorst-class ships as battleships, but they had lighter armor and guns of a smaller caliber to somewhat increase their speed. However, the American designers decided to create their own original variant, an unprecedented large heavy cruiser with high speed and enhanced main battery firepower, but light armor. In accordance with the U.S. Navy classification methodology, their new ship belonged to a special warship type that hadn't been seen either before and would never be seen again afterwards, large cruisers. At the end of 1941, the lead ship of the series, Alaska, was laid down at a shipyard in New Jersey. A preliminary draft of the cruiser, CA-2F, had a curious combination of main turrets that housed different numbers of 305 mm guns. That layout was used as the basis for what would become a new Tier 8 ship in world of warships. He's welcome, U.S. cruiser, Congress. Compared to other cruisers, she was a true steel monster, armed with seven 305mm main battery guns housed in three turrets, six 127mm twin-gun secondary mounts, and decent anti-aircraft defenses presented in the form of 14 40mm coupled Bofors mounts and 20 20mm Oerlikon automatic guns. The warship has two primary combat tactic variants. The first one is to fire from afar. Congress has decent accuracy, a good firing range, a heavy salvo weight, and she's capable of dealing high damage with both her high explosive and armor-piercing shells. The spotting aircraft consumable will also come in handy to those who helm her. The second variant is to support your allies in their fight for key areas. Her decent HP pool will help you sustain a few hits, while her effective anti-aircraft defenses will easily deal with any incoming enemy aviation. The defensive AA fire and fighter consumables will also contribute to making the second combat tactic more effective. In addition to the aforementioned consumables, hydroacoustic search and surveillance radar are also available. However, any captain at the helm of Congress should remember that her shells take some time to reach their target. That aspect should particularly be taken into consideration when firing from afar if you want to deal damage effectively. You should also avoid being hit with high explosive shells because the ship has low maneuverability and extinguishing fires take some time, 60 seconds to be precise. Let's talk about upgrades. We recommend installing main armaments modification one, Damage Control System Modification 1, Aiming Systems Modification 1, Damage Control System Modification 2, and Concealment System Modification 1. To finish up, it's time for the traditional Armada raffle. To take part in the raffle, you need to do three things. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, answer the following question correctly. What was the name of the preliminary draft of the large cruiser that served as the basis for Congress? Don't forget to specify your nickname and the server you play on in the comment with your answer. We'll randomly draw the winner and announce them by the next Armada episode. The winner will receive an Admiral pack that includes Cruiser Congress, a 10 skill point commander, a commemorative flag, and other great items. Participate in the raffle, and good luck, Captain.